Yeah. Okay, this is 7.3 Sokotoa, the tangent ratio. All right, this is uh, something that will be hopefully ingrained in your brain uh, for the next couple of years. With math, you're going to hear this a lot, this Sokotoa. You might have already heard of it. Who's heard of that before, that expression, Sokotoa? All right, guys, a couple of guys have heard that. Where, did you learn that somewhere? No? Okay, this is when you first learn it. So in right triangles, we use the words opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse to name the sides of the triangle relative to the angle of interest. Okay, so keep in mind that the angle of interest can change. So the opposite side, the adjacent side, or the hypotenuse is the one thing that never changes, but the adjacent and the opposite will change depending on the angle that we're looking at. So what do I mean by opposite? If I said a angle A was the angle of concern, opposite would be this side length, okay? This would be adjacent. Adjacent is another word for next to. So if we're talking about again angle A, it would be this side length that's adjacent, okay? AC, all right? The hypotenuse is always the longest side and opposite the right angle, we know that, okay? If angle A is the angle of interest, BC is the opposite, AC is the adjacent. If angle B is the angle of interest, AC is the opposite, opposite, and then BC is the adjacent. Any questions on how to determine what's opposite, what's adjacent, or what's hypotenuse? That's the very basics, right? That's the fundamentals. If we don't understand that, we can't formulate any of the questions, okay? So very, very important you understand what we're saying when we're saying opposite adjacent, okay? And, and this here, you can imagine then, Sokotoa is the O and the H and the A, you should recognize now what they stand for. O is opposite, H is hypotenuse, and A is adjacent. We'll talk about, yeah, well, yeah. We'll talk about what S, C, and T are, but you know what the O and the H and the A are now, okay? All right, so here, identify the hypotenuse opposite side and adjacent side for the following triangles, okay? So here, this little theta symbol, so theta is I think the letter T in Greek maybe, it's a circle with a line through the middle, a little dash in the middle, that's called theta, okay? Theta represents the angle of interest. So who can tell me what labels am I gonna use for each one of these sides? I'm gonna use an O, an A, and an H. You tell me, based on the side length, you can say AC is A, AC is H, you can tell me, we're gonna go through these four. Each one of you is gonna try this, okay? Jadane, what am I gonna use for AC? If theta is the angle of interest, it's either gonna be an O for opposite, A for adjacent, or H for hypotenuse. What do you think? A, correct. Okay, how about CB? Not hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, remember, is always opposite the right angle. Yeah, so what am I going to label it? O. Oh. And what am I going to label this side? H. Okay, so the easiest way to do this might be to identify the hypotenuse first. It's really super easy. It's opposite the right angle. And then you're only left with really identifying one side, and the other side is going to be the other, the other one, right? So I would do H, O, as the opposite from the angle of interest, and then just assign the last side adjacent. Adjacent's probably the trickiest, I would guess. Okay, Alan, you're gonna do this one. Where's H? Yep. Okay, where's O? No. So here's your angle of interest. So you know, O is your opposite. So what's opposite theta there? Yeah, O. And then this one? Okay, good. You guys got to get good at this. Junior, last, this one. Where's H? M, M. Yep. Where's O? Uh, L, N. Yep. And where's A? Uh, L, M. Yep. Okay, A is adjacent to the angle of interest. O is the opposite. Okay, uh, RC. H? Can you put your bag down on the floor, please? Say it again. D? Yeah, you're doing D, yes. 
Welcome. Where's H? F E is H. H is the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. F D, yeah. Where's O? Nope. O is opposite the angle of interest. Yeah. If you're if you're awake here, I see this is, becomes very easy. Okay, I don't know what to tell you that, but you gotta pay attention, okay? Super easy. Hypotenuse opposite adjacent. Okay. Trigonometric ratios. These are what these letters stand for, S, C, and T. They stand for sine, cosine, and tangent. You're gonna be hearing this a lot for the next two chapters. It's not something that goes away, unfortunately. You will hear it first week next year. There are three main ratios in tri trigonometry, and they're often shortened to sine, cos, and tan. That's what they are, sine, cos, and tan. You might have seen these on your calculator. Some people say sin when they see this. They want to pronounce that sine, not sin. Okay? Please, please, please do not say sin when you go into grade 11. I'll tell you, Mr. Mills taught me it's sine, not sin. Okay, the calculation is simple. One side of the right triangle divided by the other side. That's all it is. So when we're talking about sine of the angle, we're talking about the opposite side of theta over the hypotenuse. Okay, so if we're talking about this triangle A, we would be talking about the ratio of CB, which is opposite, over AB, H. So all of these, these things are sine, cos, and tan, they're just a ratio of two side lights. That's what they are. And they're not, they're not like super crazy complicated, they're just a ratio. And that's why if we can remember Soka Toa, that will tell us the, the ratio. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan, tangent, is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so that's, that's our ratios. One, two, three. Where theta is the angle of interest. So here's the memory trick. So, ka, toa. That's how you remember it. So, ka, toa. So what is, what is the ratio for cosine theta? Can anybody tell me? Cosine theta, what's the ratio? Yeah? Correct, that's right. Andrew, how about tangent? What is the ratio of the tangent? The ratio of the tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, KG. What does sine theta mean? What is it? Yeah. So if someone asked you, what is sine? What is cosine? What is that? You're just going to say it's a ratio. That's all it is. It's a ratio of the, the side lengths of a triangle. That's what it is. It's not this big mystery. Students get very confused. Or, um, later, you're going to find out how to graph like this. Y equals sine theta. You're going to find out it looks like this. And that's going to get a lot more complicated. But for the time being, you're just learning what these ratios are. Okay? So don't worry too much about that. I'm not sure. I don't know if we get into that next chapter. Today, we're only going to practice the tangent ratio. Sine and cosine ratios are in the next lesson. So we're just looking at 10. We're starting with 10. So 10 is opposite over adjacent. Okay. Opposite, you can think opposite is never on the, on, the de on the denominator. It's never on the bottom. It always wants to be on the top. Opposite is on, on the top. Okay, sometimes the uh, adjacent will go from top to the bottom, but opposite always wants to be on the numerator, okay? So TOA, opposite over adjacent. So we don't need the hypotenuse for TOA. So for the following right angles, determine the tangent ratios B and C. So we want to find tan C and tan B. That's what we're trying to figure out here. So what is this equal to? 
Max. What do you think? What do you think Tan sees? Yeah, so we're dealing with C, right? C is the angle, this one. So you got it, you're right, it's opposite over adjacent. So what numbers would those be based on this triangle? Uh, which one's like, for like the variables? Like, is it 12 over 9? No, so 12 is adjacent to C, right? It's next to C. You want opposite awesome. over adjacent. Yeah, 9 over 12. Okay. B. So now we're doing tan B, the same triangle, but we're looking at a different angle of interest. RC, what is opposite over adjacent for B? What's the opposite side length to B? Sorry? What's the opposite length to this, the vertice B? What? Yeah, what is it? Can you, can you see it? Yeah, 12. Over, what's adjacent? Adjacent to B. Just the side next to B, not the hypotenuse. Yeah, nine. I'm not trying to trick you here. All right. Rudy, this one, you want to tell me what tan B is and tan C? Tan B is opposite over adjacent and tan C is opposite over adjacent. What's that, Rudy? So we're looking at B, so we want the opposite. It's not 30. It's not 30 over 16. We're looking at B, so the, what's the opposite to B? Opposite side to the angle B. Yeah. Yeah. Over. Yeah. Why are you confused? I don't know why this is confusing. Opposite to the angle. Just go to the other side. Right? What is it for C, Rudy? C now. 30 over 16. Good. Any questions here? So we can see that there's two tan ratios for each triangle. You can never use tan A. You can't, you can't do that because it's the right angle. Oh yeah, one massive other big thing. Huge, huge thing. This only works for right ang angle triangles, okay? You guys understand that? The reason being is in a non-right angle triangle, do we even have a hypotenuse? No. No, we don't. Hypotenuse is defined by Pythagorean, right? He said it's the side length opposite the 90 degree angle. If we don't have a 90 degree angle, we don't have a hypotenuse. If we don't have a hypotenuse, we don't have the Sokotoa ratios. Make sense? Now, what we can do if we get a question that is not a right angle triangle, so you have a, you have a triangle that looks like this, and you're gonna see this a lot. You're gonna see a question where you have a triangle that looks like, oh, I can just draw it here. Okay, you're gonna have like a word problem, and it's gonna give you the, the triangle like this. Okay, and it'll tell you this angle. Let's say this angle's theta. It might tell you this angle. B and A, and then it's going to be like, uh, this is a tree here. I'm just giving you a typical question. And then it's going to ask you to use the ratios. You can create a right angle triangle, a word problem like that, if you go from a vertices and you go straight down, and then you have a right angle triangle. Just like we do sometimes, remember when we want to get the area of a triangle, and we create that little dashed line for the height, right? Then we use that height to calculate the area of a triangle. 
you can do something similar to that where you create a right angle triangle and now you can use the ratios to get this side, right? Because that's the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So started with a non-right triangle, you're not going to say, oh, I can't do the problem, sir, it's not a right angle triangle. You're going to try to create a right angle triangle within that non-right angle triangle. Okay? You'll see that as we get to the examples. All right. We need to talk, stop and talk a little bit here about calculator skills. The sine, cos, and tan buttons on your calculator are the trig functions. Okay, we use these functions to calculate a trig ratio or an angle measure. Everyone take a look at their, their calculator right now and make sure you have those, those values, sine, cos, and tan. Now, you might have a cal if you have a calculator like this, where if you press sign, you don't actually see the word sign. It just like disappears on your number. That is not a great calculator. You're really going to want to consider, even at the dollar store, a calculator that when you press sign, you'll see the word sign. You're going to need this for, for next year. You have a calculator and you can't press sign something, you just press sign and it like does nothing, it's going to be very hard for you to, to do these problems. You're going to be well disadvantaged. This is the, the moment where you decide, are we doing math seriously, are we taking it seriously, are we buying a really good calculator? Because there is major, major advantages in the calculators. My favorite are uh, these sharp dowel calculators. This is a, a really uh, primitive one. There's like nice, nicer ones, those are my favorite. You want something that it has like a two line calculator. So you can see a line at the top. Yeah, so this is a two-line calculator, right? You can see your calculation at the top. And you only have a one-line calculator like this. Yeah, that's a two-line calculator. You can see what you've written at the top. And also, when you press sign, you're going to see the word sign. You want to make sure that you have a two-line calculator. Very important. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can come see me after class. Let's keep going. But that's, that's very important. All right, so for some calculators, if you press the trig, sign, cos, or tan button, you can enter the angle measurement and then press the equal sign. So if you can press sign, let's say sign 90, that should give you one, right? Everybody try that? Yes, sir. Sign 90 should give you one. If it doesn't give you one, you're not in degrees, you're in radians, that's a problem too. You're gonna have to reset your calculator. Everybody do sign 90. Other calculators, you enter the angle of measure and then you have to press the sign button. If you have this calculator, non buono, not good. You want the one where you press sign and you can see sign and press the angle. Anybody have this calculator where you have to press the number 90 and then press sign? That's not great. Yeah, 